I should say we are very honored to have my very good friend from uh, Turkey, Ilorin Tanidir. He's an associate professor of urology at Marmara University School of Medicine. Uh, he's director of endourology and stone disease uh, division. He specializes in urinary stone disease, both in adults and children. His current research interests are mainly prospective retrospective clinical trials on endoscopic stone surgeries, urinary markers, and patient reported outcomes. He is the project director and associate editor at Europedia, holds scientific contents like uh, webcasts, abstracts, posters, surgical videos, hands on training, videos summarizing the latest meta analysis articles, etc. He has several publications in peer reviewed journals and in textbooks. Uh, over to you, my friend, you, Lauren. Thank you. I guess you can see right. Uh, thank you for the kind invitation. I'm honored uh, to be here. It's a great pleasure to be in the faculty. Uh, can you hear me, by the way? Hello? Can you hear, can 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 you hear me? Can, uh, we can hear you. Your presentation is also crisp. Uh, uh, For the participants, okay. don't miss the last talk, which is on sterilization, which is also very Nicely made by Manas. Uh, sorry, uh, take okay. over, Karidir. Okay, so I'll be giving a lecture about complications or complication of retrograde intrarenal surgery. Actually, some of my friends had already talked about them, but I'll uh, try to make a brief uh, talk. I have no disclosures to make. Uh, this is the biggest data that we have. Uh, it, it's the data from the Clinical Research Office. It holds more than uh, 12,000 patients. And this, uh, this uh, publication tells us that the overall complication rate of ureteroscopy is not too much. It's only 7.4%. However, if you do a flexible ureteroscopy, the incidence of complications is more 1.5 times greater than a semi-rigid one. And the complications which had been listed in this publication are uh, bleeding and perforation and failed access in the majority for the intraoperative complications. Uh, on the postoperative complications, bleeding, fever, uh, infection, septicemia, pain, urinary retention, and stent displacement were listed. Some of these complications act actually don't look like a severe one. However, when you put them into Clavian score, for example, the bleeding, some of them actually need uh, further treatments with endoscopic, radiologic, or surgical ones, which means actually they are severe complications. Uh, when we talk about these complications, they can be, and there can be an incidence. There can be a preoperative or postoperative early complication, which actually can also be divided into minor and major ones. And we can also list the complications as postoperative late complications. What are the things that we call as incidents, they actually are not complications. They are the problems that we face. For example, having a difficulty in access, failure of an acute or an instrument, migration of a stone or malposition of a urethral stent. Actually, these do not harm the patient, but they can lead to uh, an increase in operative time, and that they can also lead to uh, several auxiliary uh, interventions afterwards. About the perioperative complications, the, the majority of them are minor complications. They are bleeding, thermal injury, or mucosal perforation. However, the major ones are the ones which threatens life or which needs uh, a kind of intervention, like like lesions, urethral lesions, 
like re urethral lesions, perforations, evulsion, exterminization, and that. Here, I want to show you the minor complications. On the left side, we see a mucosal perforation. On the right side, we see a thermal injury. And in the middle, there is a perioperative bleeding. Bleeding is important. The others actually do not have a severe harm. However, with bleeding, you can obscure, we can have an ob obscure in the vision and the operation can be delayed or we can postpone the uh, operation. Another trick to overcome this vision problem may be uh, using a hundred percent of contrast material from the injection port from time to time can increase the vision. As I told you, bleeding is only reported in the in the series. However, stone burden and CT attenuation of the stone can uh, can lead to uh, it has a correlation with the hematuria, has a correlation with the bleeding. Force that you put on the intranal pressure if it exceeds an, an amount and mucosal injuries are the main causes of bleeding. Dr. Olivia Traxer has introduced a scale, a scale for the urethral wall injury and grade two and three, which actually uh, holds mucosal injury and full thickness injury are, uh, are listed as high grade urethral injuries. And uh, with Dr. Manoj Monka, last year they published this prospective data, uh, a, a, a series which has uh, 446 patients, uh, 46 patients, and over, overall the high grade lesion rate was only 12.5%. And the stricture rate in this high grade lesion was 1.8% in a medium follow-up of three years, which means it is very rare. Uh, the, these lesions actually do not mend much. Here we can see several uh, complications from grade one to three. Uh, what we do if we have grade two and three uh, injuries, we only place a JJ stand and leave it there for two weeks. And here are another, here are the fluoroscopy images of other patients. To have less bleeding or to have less pr problems, uh, less perforation, you have to have a decrease, you have to decrease the intranal pressure. The best way to do this is uh, to use a urethral access sheet. The one, the patient on the right side is an adult and the others are uh, children who are 1.5 years old. And on the right side, as you can see, uh, we, we initiate the surgery without an access sheet. However, the pressure has uh, led us uh, some complications. And to overcome these complications, we introduce an urethral access sheet and at the end, everything seems perfect. However, we should not, uh, we should be careful about the, uh, in, about introducing the urethral access sheet. We should negotiate uh, in, a, in, in care and we should negotiate with, uh, with the ureter uh, so that uh, no force will be there uh, unless we put a force the ureter can has several severe complications like perforation and avulsion. Avulsion is another uh, severe complication that we can face with. Uh, and this actually happens very, uh, very rare. And uh, it is actually also underreported. It happens due to a uh, basket usage or sometimes the tip of the sub scope can get stuck in the UPG and when you pull it down you can again 
lost in an evolution. Concerning the post-operative early complications, we also, again, have minor and major complications. The most common one is fever, which can accompany infection. And when we, we can't realize and we, we, and we can't treat the infection in a certain time, it can lead to septicemia, which is a major complication. And the hematuria, if it happens less than six hours, it is transient hematuria, and we and it is a minor complication. However, if it exceeds two days, then we might need some other interventions such as angiographic uh, treatment. So it is a major complication. And with this hematuria, clot retention and blunt transfusion might be needed. And we can also have abscess and hematoma formation around the kidney. And, and that also is another severe complication. Most of these complications are less in grade, less in grade. They, they are either grade one or two in Clement scale, which is the scale that we use for post-operative complications. And they only, the majority of them, them, majority of them happen with positive urine culture and long operation time and high irrigation fluid rate. So the best way to overcome them is to use an access sheet. And this study, again, from the CROSS data has shown us that the virtual access sheet usage can actually not uh, led us to too much uh, complications as some propose. Another complication can be due to high grade, uh, for another complication can also happen due to large stone burden. Any stone larger than two centimeters can have larger number of uh, fever rate and they also end up with longer operation time. So the risk factors for fever and infection is high intracranial pressure, irrigation, high in irrigation rate, and longer operation time, which we can actually control. Hematoma and extravasation are also major problems. They, all, they actually happen in patients with, lower, with urinary tract infections in children and merely in cystine stones. If they are infected, we have to drain them. If they are sterile, we can observe them. One third to two thirds of the infected hematoma can lead to nephrectomy. So we should have to be careful about them. This is the patient that I operate two months later. He had been admitted to our hospital uh, due to fever. As you can see, this patient had an extravasation at the time of operation, but in the post-operative follow-up, it didn't really, uh, he didn't really have a major problem. However, as you can see here, he had a huge hematoma. So we had to place a drainage and we had to treat that patient with antibiotic treatments. So the urethral obstruction can happen due to edema clots and due to the stones and proper uteral access sheet is the, uh, is the best way to overcome them. And urethral stenting is another way to overcome them. In the old series, reflux has also been told. However, small caliber, slow, small caliber, uh, small caliber devices and uh, no dilatation techniques had uh, helped us in decreasing them. Deep vein thrombosis and nerve damage can also happen, but this can be overcome with proper positioning and cushioning. Rare complications are actually being reported like this one, where a stent has migrated outside the kidney uh, and fistulas and necrosis can also happen in patients with radiation treatment and partial uh, perforation and this vascularization. Last but not the least, we, we, we can observe mortality. So urosepsis and hemorrhagic complications are the main reasons of that after a uro, uh, flexible urethroscopy treatment. To overcome these problems, 
uh, we have to have patients with the steroid, sterile urine. We have to use urethral access sheet in the ones which we can. We have to be careful about this flow and we have to have an operation time less than two hours for adults and one hour, one hour for children. And we also have to be careful in the post-operative phase. This is actually, the, these are the last slides that I would like to share with you. The, the three important post-operative late complication that we can face are strictures, stenosis, and drift box. They, they happen after a month. That's why we have to be careful about them and we have to ask every patient to visit us and to obtain an imaging at the end of first month. Instrumentation, impacted stones, urethral perforation, mucosal lesions, and ischemia is the, are the main, main etiological factors in stenosis. And reflux can happen, but nowadays it is really low because our in instruments yeah. are small. We'll and each person coordinated the question at the time. Structure can also happen. Uh, we don't know the actual rate, but we can treat them uh, if they are less than one centimeter with an endoscopical fashion. Uh, however, dense structures and uh, stone structures which are larger than one centimeter need to be treated with an open or laparoscopic intervention, and we have to do reconstructive surgeries for them. Thank you for your uh, attention. Thank Since you we don't very have much. Uh much uh, time. I won't go about um, these. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Iloran.